Hello guys, this is Agnieszka from Den of Imagination and welcome to Enlarged Worker tutorial from Dungeons & Dragons Whiskey's Mondo series. This is a basic level painting tutorial, so if you are new to the painting world, this tutorial is just for you. Step 1. For start, let's plan ahead which parts we shall paint first. When we are working with the model that is already fully built, sometimes, as we can see on this model specifically, we have parts that overlap each other. We also have to consider the techniques that we are going to use with the size of the parts of the model and adjust this to the order of the painting pattern. This model has a very dark palette. So to make our work easier, the first thing that we have to do is to paint the entire model with black paint, base, body and weapons. Thanks to that we will not have to use wash for every surface, thus we will avoid the chance that we will have stains on the surface, which is especially important with skin. If you have, use an airbrush or spray can to speeden up the process. If not, that's okay, just take the biggest brush you have and paint the model by hand. Be careful to not cover the surface with a thick layer of paint, so we will still see the details on the model, especially on the clothes and the beard. Step 2. When our base coat is even and dry, we can proceed with painting. Take violet paint and white brush size 6. Here we will show you how you can use a dry brush technique to blend the colors on the surface like skin to avoid glaze which sometimes can be problematic on large and smooth surfaces. With this technique it is very important that the bristles of your brush are completely dry, so do not dip your brush into the water. Just take a little bit of the paint on the tip of the brush and wipe it out on the paper towel. When you see the mist effect on the paper, we are ready to go. Cover the skin of the dwarf, arms and head with an even layer of violet color. Very slowly, the color will start to appear. Build the strength of the color gradually and try not to fasten the process by applying more paint on the brush. In the beginning, it is safer to work with a small amount of paint while working with dry brush. You can always dip your brush again and add another layer, but if you take too much paint and you will not wipe it out correctly, then you can create smudges on the model that will be very difficult to clean off. Step 3. After violet, take leather brown and again a white brush. With the same techniques, cover half of the skin area with a new color. When we used violet, we covered the entire surface of the skin. With leather brown, we covered the three quarters of its surface, allowing violet to remain visible in the shadows, hollows and areas near clothes or from the bottom of the model. This way, violet becomes our shadow and highlights the warm leather brown shade that becomes our light. To get this effect easier, move your brush in one direction from up to down. With violet, we could move our brush in every direction, also along the length of the muscles. Now, move the brush rather across the sculpture so that the color does not stick to the bottom of the arm. Step 4. Take neutral grey and again with dry brush technique add yet another color on the arms in the same way as we added leather brown, on less surface and concentrating the color on the upper half of the skin. Use this color also to cover the base of highlights. Very important is that when we are working with a dry brush with more than one color, we should always work with a clean brush for each of the colors that we work with. So if you do not have more white brushes, Remember to clean it before you start to apply another color. You can use water, but before you start painting with it, wipe it out very thoroughly with a paper towel or just give it a time to get dry. Thanks to combining three different colors with the dry brush and putting the colors on top of the other, 
In specific order, we have perfectly blended skin without the need of glazing everything from the beginning and just adding glaze at the end to add some last highlights. Step 5. Now take dark sea blue and a white brush. Cover the clothes of the dwerga, shoes, trousers and skirts. Do not be afraid to overpaint the belts and leather details. We will later paint them with yet another color, so it doesn't matter. Here the dark sea blue may not appear strong enough in the beginning. Acrylics are paints that depend very much on the color underneath, and because we have black color as a base coat, and dark sea blue is also quite dark by itself, so it may seem to be too dark in the first view. This is absolutely fine, because later we will enhance it with a little bit of glaze. Dry brush technique always weakens the color, so the layer done by glaze or basic painting will always be brighter than the one done by dry brush. That is also why dry brush is the perfect base for the glaze. Step 6. Here I made a mistake and forgot to highlight the bird while using the neutral grey at step 4. So I'm going back to neutral grey and using a dry brush to highlight the bird. You can do this freely without worrying yourself that you will overpaint the skin or other parts because we already used the neutral grey for the skin and some segments still wait to be painted with first layers. So even if there will be any mist of neutral grey on neighbor areas, it will not be visible later. Step 7. For the last dry brush base coat step, we will use silver paint to color the hammer and the shield. The method remains the same. Take a wide brush, remember to keep it dry, dip the tip of your brush in the paint and wipe it out on the paper towel. But pay attention that while working with dry brush and metallic paints, there may appear the metallic dust on the model. Be sure to clean it with another clean brush, it has to be dry as well so it will not attach itself to the surface. Step 8. Now let's pause with the dry brush for a while. Take gunmetal blue and a round brush. Cover with it the chain mail, gauntlets and pauldrons. Because this is a metallic paint, you will more likely have to cover those parts with more than one layer. Step 9. Next, take hull red and cover with it the leather belts around the waist and ankles of the dwerga. Also, the leather parts of the gauntlet and the hem of the skirt should also be painted with hull red. Make sure that the color is put evenly. If no, remember to wait until the first layer will be dry before you start to apply the second one. The same goes with the gunmetal blue that we used on the previous step. 
Acrylics are paints that work the best at dry surfaces, so do not hust yourself. Give the paint a few minutes. Step 10. It's time for wash. Take black paint and mix it with a lot of water, like a lot of water, until it is very liquid and half transparent. Now we have a wash. Clean your brush, dry it out on the paper towel and take a lot of wash on your brush. Start to apply it on the chainmail, belts, shield and the hammer. Because the duerga is quite large for a model, try to work with closed segments so we will not have stains and half dried wash lines in the middle of the segment. By segments, I mean the parts that are clearly separated from each other by another part or a recess. If you apply too much wash on a segment, just clean your brush with water, dry it out on the paper towel and touch the excess of wash with it. The bristles of the brush will take the wash off from the model's surface. Here, give the model time to get dry. It's very important for the next steps that our surface is dry. Step 11. Now that we finished the base coating and shadowing, it's time for main highlights. Prepare two colors, neutral grey and beige, and run brush size 3. Put those two colors next to each other on your palette. Start to mix them in order to find a color that is slightly brighter than neutral grey. Add some water as well for it to be more liquid, so it will be easier not to only mix them, but also to paint with them. After mixing, clean your brush and dry it out on the paper towel. Do not work with a brush that is still full of mixed paint. Also, try the mix out on the another surface first. It can be a palette, it can be your hand. Compare the shade of the skin of your model with your mix before you will use it on the model itself. Our shade may be too dark or too light in the beginning, so you may have to change the ratio of the colors. When you are sure of the color, Clean your brush again and take just a little bit of the paint on your brush. Start to draw the highlights on the pics of each muscle cell. Try to do it in a crescent moon shape. When you finish, add just a little bit of beige to your mix, thus making it brighter by half of the tone, and apply it on the same spot. In this way, you build the light on the skin. While working with the head, try to work more with the side of the brush than the tip. Thanks to that, we will have less visible lines left by brush. You can also try a bigger brush like wide brush size 10 or a round brush size 5 and bigger. With the tip, add highlights on the wrinkles on the forehead and the bridge of the nose. For the bird, take silver grey paint and round the brush. Gently brush with the side of it over the surface of the bird. Do not go deeper with your brush between the gaps, just cover the top layer of bird hair with a layer of paint. In this way, we emphasize individual hairs without covering the shadows. Later, with the same way, use white to add light on the moustache and eyebrows and on the hair on the back of the head. Step 12. Now take dark sea blue and grey blue, and the same way as with the previous mix, put those two colors together on the palette. First, take the clean dark sea blue and enhance the places done with the dry brush with a thin layer. You do not have to cover everything like we did with dry brush, but only those parts that should be the brightest, the crests of the folds, the flat fronts of the shoes. As we mentioned before, dry brush always weakens the color, so after adding the layer with basic glaze with the same color, 
we can achieve the same effect as you would while working with many thin layers and with two colors. The combinations of dry brush and glaze done with the same color is the easiest way to create a smooth transition of color. After this, mix dark sea blue with grey blue to create a half tone and add this color on the same places, but again, not covering the same spots entirely. Leave some of the previous parts unpainted so we can still see each color of the shade. At last, add white color to your mix to create an even lighter tone and pass some blicks of light in the middle of each highlight. Step 13. As we finish with clothes, we can now proceed with the leather. The colors for this step are leather brown and pale sand. The method stays the same as with previous glazes, that is, painting the light of those parts while mixing those two colors to create lighter and lighter shades of brown while covering less and less surface and leaving the recesses and shadows untouched. Step 14. On the gauntlets we have small spikes that should be the same color as the armor of the Dwerga, so simply take gunmetal blue and paint them with it. Step 15. Before we will add the last highlights, let's add some stains on the hammer and shield. Take three colors, violet, cool red and dark sea blue. Do not mix them with one another, just simply take a little bit of one of them with the brush, it can be white or round, doesn't matter, but keep it dry as you would do with the dry brush. The difference is, don't wipe out the paint, or at least not entirely and start randomly applying those colors on the surface of those parts. When you are done with one color, take another and repeat the pattern. It is important to also leave some metallic color visible as well. With the shield, try to concentrate those stains more on the lower half.
Step 16. Now take silver. With a clean white brush, use dry brush technique to add some highlights on the hammer and shield. In the previous step, we covered those two evenly. Here, we just need a clean silver color just for highlights, so concentrate only on specific spots. Change your brush for a round one and add with lining clean silver on the metal details. Paint the belt buckle, metal circles on the ankles, add blicks of light on the spikes and some lining on the pauldrons. You can also add some lining on the hammer and shield as well. Step 17. With silver grey and dry brush, add some highlights on the base. Later, wipe off the dry brush dust. While working with dry brush techniques, cleaning the model from the dry brush dust every time we are done with the layer is a good habit to have. It helps to keep the model clean. Step 18. And for the last, the eyes. Take silver grey and round brush with sharp tip. It doesn't have to be the smallest brush you have, although if you feel safer, of course take one, but the tip needs to be clean and sharp. Take just a little bit of this paint with the brush tip and paint the eyes. Turn around the model to have better access for the other eye. And the model is ready! Hope that you enjoyed this painting tutorial. Be sure to share your results on social media and tag us Den of Imagination. We would really like to see your results. If you have any questions about the tutorial or you would like to see a particular miniature painted, please leave it on the comment section below. Also, please click the subscribe button and bell notification, it helps the channel. See ya!